Hi, I'm Eric Eager. I'm an applied mathematician and data scientist. In this course, you will dive into one of the more important collections of mathematical tools for data science, linear algebra. Linear algebra is the study of linear operations on mathematical objects such as vectors, matrices, and tensors, where data generally lives. Data needs to be stored somewhere, and many of the objects in which we store data, like spreadsheets, tables, and data frames, can be broken down into one of the main objects studied in linear algebra, namely vectors and matrices. Here I'm looking at the first few rows of a data set which has athletic data for players entering the National Football League draft. This data set has one case in each row, player with name omitted, and one feature or variable like height in each column. The most basic non-trivial object of linear algebra is a vector, which is an n-dimensional collection of elements, usually numbers. Example of both column and row vectors can be found above in x and y respectively. The arrow above x and y signifies that they are vectors. The transpose of a column vector is simply the same vector made into a row vector, and vice versa, with the superscript t denoting transposition. Aside from reading in lists of data from external sources, you can create vectors by hand a few different ways in R. One way is to repeat the same element a number of times using the rep function. Here the vector x is assigned four ones by the rep one comma four command. Another way is to create a vector that has a pattern to it. Here the vector y is assigned the numbers two, four, six, and eight by the seek two comma eight comma by equals two command. You can simply put all of the elements you want in a vector of interest by using the C command for concatenate. This is not practical for large problems, but will be useful as you learn linear algebra here. Here Z is giving us the numbers one, five, negative two, and four using the C comma one, five, negative two, four command. Lastly, Elements of a vector can be changed individually by selecting an index and using the assignment arrow. For example, to change the third element of z to 7, simply write z3 assignment arrow 7. Matrices are simply the superimposition of vectors with other vectors. An m by n matrix can be thought of as the superimposition of n m-dimensional column vectors or m n-dimensional row vectors. For example, the matrix A above is a 5 by 2 matrix. And many data frames can be viewed as matrices, with cases acting as rows and features acting as columns. Here in this data set, you can explicitly see cases A through F living in the first five rows of the data set, while variables 1 and 2 live in the second and third column. You can create matrices by hand in a few different ways. One way is to repeat the same element for a certain number of rows and columns using the matrix function. The first argument is the number of rows. The second is the number of columns in this case. Here the three by two matrix of all twos is made via the matrix two comma three comma two command. Also as with vectors, you can create matrices element by element using the C command. It is best to specify the number of rows and columns in each case using the n row and n call commands. Here, a matrix is made using the matrix C1, comma, negative 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, comma, 2, comma, negative 2, comma, n row equals 2, comma, n call equals 3, comma, by row equals true. By row tells R to make the matrix each row at a time. The default for by row command is false. Lastly, as with vectors, you can manually change any element of a matrix using the assignment arrow. Here the row index is followed by the comma and the column index. So changing the 2, 1 element of matrix A can be done with the command A, 2, comma, 1, assignment arrow 100. Time to put this into practice. 